Okay, welcome to the class Holothuroidea video in the phylum Echinodermata. Um, it looks a bit, when you first see it, like some sort of crazy worm, but uh, you'll probably recognize this as a sea cucumber. And once we go through this video and uh, um, you read a little bit further into it, you'll see that it has a similar body plan to all the other Echinodermata. The, all the other echinodermata with the pentamerous radial symmetry. Okay, they're very similar to the echinoidea, like the urchins, and that they have the one-way gut with the mouth and one side, an anus on the other side, the abroral side. But essentially, these are like a uh, urchin that is flopped over on its side and elongated. And once you have something with um, the mouth at one end and the anus at the other end and it's on its side that implies directional movement and you're probably going to get bilateral symmetry. So it's like they're a bit like the irregular urchins but a little more elongated as we'll see. Here's a Caribbean furry sea cucumber. So we saw the the smaller ones that we have here but these things do get very large. And here is the body plan, the general body plan that you should know for all sea cucumbers for all holothuroidians. They follow the same type of body plan. Now, uh, we know that they have pen all the echinoderms have pentamerous radial symmetry. And you'll see that these ones do as well. They've got one, two, and then three, four, five. Okay, so this is like looking at a, a kina test, but uh, turned on its side. So this is on the bottom here is showing one half looking at the side that faces the substrate and you can see all the little two feet and along three of those axes and then you also have if you look at the top side here this whole area is the top side which is facing up as these things are lying on the bottom. They have very reduced podia here, very small podia, okay, or they may even be absent. So the two feet have stopped working because they don't really need to if they're facing up towards the surface. Then we've also seen before these specialized tube feet around the mouth called dendritic tentacles, all right, and they are even more enlarged and specialized in the holothuroidians than we've seen before. Here's a gonopore, we know what that is for when they broadcast spawn. And what they do is mostly deposit feed. So they'll take a lot of material in off of the surface and you'll find these piles of pellets or they might even be in longer uh, strings underwater and you'll know that you've been uh, where a sea cucumber has been. Okay, the skeleton of ossicles is reduced to microscopic structures called sclerites. We've seen that before. The tiny little sclerites in um, the intro, the overview video, which are used as a diagnostic characteristic. But their main protection is a tough, leathery, flexible, bad tasting, uh, uh, body covering. They can have between 10 and 30 of those buccal podia, or those oral tentacles, which are modified uh, tube feet. And the tentacles can be completely retracted inside the body, which is what will happen if you pick one up. You won't be able to see those, those buccal tentacles. Here are some pictures of sclerites, the ossicles, sea cucumbers. Um, they have ambulacral and interambulacral sections to the body, just like we saw in the echinoidea. Uh, they have the three areas, the ambulacral areas that have uh, two feet, and like the sole of a shoe, okay, they, that is the, known as the sole with those three ambulacral areas, or the trivium. So they mostly deposit or suspension feed, although they do quite a lot of other, uh, they do quite a lot of modes of, of feeding. And let's have a look. 
here are some of the modes. All right, so they can be subsurface, they can crawl through the, the sediment subsurface, they will sometimes um, feed in the, in the subsurface deposits and then poo up to the top. Sometimes they'll bury most of their body. Strawberry holothuridians like uh, in the Fjordland area you might have seen if you've ever been diving down there and then they wave their, um, their dendritic tentacles, their buccal uh, podia up into this, the surface and, and they filter feed. Um, and then they can also stand up like this, right next to the seaweed. They can stand up and filter feed further up in the water column. Um, they can crawl along on rocks, filter, um, and they will um, pick up particulate matter that's settled or crawl along on the surface and pick up particulate matter that's settled. Here's one that is filter feeding. Okay, and you can see the one, two, three rows of podia on the sole or the trivium. All right, and over here we see um, an asteroidian. Okay, they, they're quite different than the other echinoderms that we've seen. They have something called a respiratory tree, which is uh, how they exchange gas, respiratory trees. And they're located on the inside of the body. Okay, the, at the anus, there's something called the cloaca, which you probably remember from mammals, birds, and fish, with the uh, same as the the opening for um, reproduction in sharks. But the cloaca, and that is the opening at the anus. And the respiratory trees uh, will articulate with that cloaca. So here's a nice picture of it. Here is the cloaca, all right? And it's got these little muscles right here that allow the, that pull the cloaca open and shut. So it's kind of like a bellows. And it pumps water into these respiratory trees, which have, are highly invaginated, which gives them lots of surface area. And if they are, very much like our lungs, except they're filled with water. And so these things are pumped full of water um, by the action of the cloaca. And then after a time, the cloaca will pump the water back out of the respiratory trees and then fill them in, in again. So if you look at the anus of a sea cucumber, you'll see it slowly pulsates open and closed. Um, and there are five of these. There are actually, it only shows one, but there are actually five respiratory trees, uh, one for each part of the pentamerous radial symmetry, those sections of the body. All right, and you see the buccal tentacles again. All right, the madreporite is inside the body at the rear end as well. They are dioecious. They usually have a single gonad, and so that means that they have, they're have they either male or female. Um, then they are either planktonically developed or they may brood the eggs, all right, and then release them as young, very small um, sea cucumbers. It's funny because you almost never see a sea cucumber that's not fully developed when when you're diving, unless you're really looking for them. Okay, in terms of defense, all right, because they are just a bag of guts, or they're a bag of protein sitting on the surface that doesn't move very quickly, they have two things, bad taste, and then also these cuvierian tubules, cuvierian tubules, all right? And these are essentially tubes that come out of the rear end they're held within the body, and they're noxious, um, and they are sticky. So once they are, once this um, animal is threatened, these cuvarian tubules will spill out and sort of wave back and forth in the current and um, catch on to anything that is trying to uh, attack the sea cucumber. 
and they become um, quite fouled up with these sticky, uh, horrible, poisonous, noxious spaghettis that are that uh, become stuck to their body. All right, here's another picture of the Cuvarian tubules. And so they're at the base of the respiratory tree, which is here, and they will come out through the cloaca and then through the anus.